May I speak in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm speaking to you from the chapel of St Radegund in Exeter Cathedral. It's one of our hidden gems. It's the burial place and chantry chapel of Bishop John de Grandison, Bishop of Exeter from 1327 to 69, still our longest serving bishop. It marks one of that bishop's greatest achievements, the completion of this cathedral church. His chapel is built into the West Front, an unusual place for an Episcopal burial, but surely a sign of his pride in the great image screen of statues that he had placed outside, and which is such a wonderful, distinctive and globally renowned feature of this building. I love this space for a number of reasons. First, its beauty. Second, its acoustics for a single spoken or singing voice. Thirdly, it's the bit of the cathedral where one feels most closely connected to the outside world. As I speak, I can see people passing by the windows to my left. It reminds me of the church's ministry of worship and sacraments for the whole world. In this liminal space, on the border between the cathedral and the city, we cannot escape the people we are called to serve. How wonderful it was to be taken back this morning in our Gospel reading to Christmas with St John's great, In the beginning was the Word, with its bold reimagining of the book Genesis and its equally monumental, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. We're reminded that St John's Gospel prologue is not just for Christmas that God's word made flesh in Jesus resonates through all time and its light shines in all places. God places Jesus at the epicentre and origin of all creation, the heavens and the earth, or as the creed puts it, all things visible and invisible. There's a really profound challenge to us in these familiar words of St John. God's word is in everything, at all times, everywhere. God's word may be present in particular ways in the church, in preaching and in sacraments, but there is no corner of creation where God's word is not present and where its light does not shine. This week, the Cathedral community began its conversations around living in love and faith, or LLF, as the Church of England has come to know it. It's the Church's project asking how questions about identity, sexuality, relationships and marriage fit within the bigger picture of the good news of Jesus Christ. Hopefully, it will be coming to a chaplaincy, parish or mission community near you very soon. The conversations ask, what does it mean to live in love and faith together as a church? LLF is a nationwide project of narrative theology, of telling our stories to each other and finding God in them. That makes it deeply authentic and within the biblical tradition of inquiry after God. For what is the Bible, if not a vast compendium of stories about God and God's action in people's lives? This storytelling approach does put some participants into the limelight, particularly those of us in ordained ministries who are lesbian, gay, bisexual or transgender. Many of us have kept away from the limelight for fear of our safety. Some have been advised to stay in the shadows. Others have gone into the limelight only to be handed from the stage. Some of us have been required to stay away from the limelight lest we be accused of campaigning. 
So living in love and faith feels for us like a dizzying volte face. Now we are being asked, sacrificially, to take centre stage and tell our stories. If some of us are coy about participating in this process, uncertain of the effect it will have upon us, unsure whether this is a safe process, please bear with us. This sudden visitation of light, light that is coming into the church, is quite dazzling, but it is to be welcomed. This process of illumination has, of course, the possibility of showing those of us inside the church what is actually going on outside in the world, a world which is saturated with God's word, whether it knows it or not. Living in love and faith is pitched squarely at the church. In it, love is seen primarily as a sacrifice, which, of course, it is, and our understanding of that love is shaped by the cross. But of course love is also joy, mundanity, fun, fulfilment, excitement, curiosity, laughter, rapture and resurrection. My hope is that we might be able to persuade those who are living in love, but not so sure about what it means to live in faith, also to find a place in these conversations. In other words, they can be mission. I hope we can listen attentively and learn all sorts of examples of living in love. Let's make space for the marginalised and ensure their voices are heard too. After all, Jesus spoke constantly with the marginalised and spoke up loudly for them. If these conversations feature only the usual voices, they will fall well short of their potential. After all, the strange meeting of two people and love is always uniquely extraordinary. Perhaps we might learn something new about God's word, something that was under our noses the whole time. There is a possibility that we might understand afresh those familiar words of the first letter of St John. God is love, and those who live in love live in God, and God lives in them. Jesus and St John the Evangelist were very familiar with the prophecy of Isaiah. That prophecy contains one of the most seismic moments of theology and of our understanding of God. From the 45th chapter of Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have grasped to subdue the nations before him and strip kings of their robes, to open doors before him, and the gates shall not be closed. Through Cyrus the Persian, a leader who had no interest in God, the exiles in Babylon were returned to Jerusalem. In other words, God is demonstrably at work through those who do not believe in God or who have any relationship with God. Living in love and faith is a moment for all of us to step back and consider the ways in which God might be at work in the world. It's an opportunity for us to stand by our altars and look out of our church windows and to consider where the true light, which enlightens everyone, might be shining. Amen.